So today I'm about halfway between Houston and San Antonio in the lovely, quiet community of Dubina. In 1853, Joseph L. Lesicar brought the first checks to Texas. Dubina here in Fayette County became the first Czech settlement established in the mid 1850s. Initially, these Czech immigrants primarily settled in Austin, Fayette, Lavaca, and Washington counties. And their primary era of immigration to Texas was from the 1850s until World War I. Ultimately, they established many communities across central Texas. In fact, in the early 1900s, the majority of Fayette County consisted of people of Czech origin. So the St. Cyril and Methodius Catholic Church you see here was originally built in 1876, but it was destroyed by a hurricane and rebuilt in 1912. This community peaked with a population of about 500, but in 1873, the railroad bypassed the town and it soon declined. So now I'm in the lovely community of Praha. This community was established around the same time as Dubina, first settled in the year 1854, and it began to attract more Czech settlers thereafter. It was named after the Czech capital of Prague. This community peaked in the late 1800s with a population of about 700 people. But it began a steady decline soon after the railroad tracks were laid north of town. After that, people began to gravitate to the nearby town of Flatonia. So the incredibly beautiful St. Mary's Catholic Church is the highlight of Praha. I featured this church in my previous video, The Painted Churches of Texas. And it is probably my favorite church in the whole state. Incredibly beautiful on the inside. So one of the things you can take part in in these lovely historic communities of Dubina, Praha, and maybe others, I think about once a year, most of them will host a reunion of sorts where you can hear the beautiful traditional music of the Czech people.
I'm at yet another important historic Czech community, Amonsville. First settled in 1870. The early settlers were actually both Czech and German. And this is the St. John the Baptist Catholic Church, built in 1890. This church was featured in my Painted Churches of Texas video, if you haven't seen that one. There you can see the inside of this beautiful church. Just up the road from the church is another of many dance halls scattered across the back roads of Fayette County. Ketolica Jednota Texaska. One of the great contributions of Czech culture to the state of Texas is the food. One of my personal favorite breakfasts is to go to a Czech bakery and get a delicious, savory, and sweet kolache. I can't wait to see what they've got. So next we're in the lovely town of Schulenburg. This town has significant Czech, German, Austrian, and Jewish influence. First settled in the mid 1800s. One feature that I love about towns first settled by the Czech and other peoples of Central Europe are the brightly colored brick patterns on the buildings. Like the one you see here. That is cute. Look at that. Lots of information about the early settlers of Schulenburg on the wall here. Spent a lot of time reading for sure. So now we're here at the Texas Polka Music Museum. It just recently moved locations, now on Lyons Avenue. So I can remember as a kid, the local radio station would have polka hour. And I would get so excited and I'd run and skip through the house every time I heard that music. Next, I'm gonna show you a few interesting things around town. These aren't necessarily of Czech origin, but are definitely worth checking out if you come to Schulenburg. Wow, it is beautiful inside here. So just across the railroad tracks from the main street here in Schulenburg is a gorgeous historic home built in the 1850s, labeled the Old Anderson Place. This is the oldest occupied home in the town of Schulenburg.
Our next stop is here in LaGrange at the Texas Czech Heritage and Cultural Center. So all these books are in the Czech language in this library. So this is a really nice room back here where you can see traditional Czech clothing. Very colorful and beautiful. So the early Czech settlers to Texas were peasant farmers who came here looking for a better life. They wanted to avoid being drafted into the military of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, which is what they were part of back in those days. And so they came to Texas where they became farmers here as well. So just behind the main building here is the Czech village. And this was established in order to preserve Czech culture and history. Many of these buildings were scattered across various communities in this part of Texas. And so in recent years, they were moved here where you can see them all together in one place. Very lovely. This 1897 lodge was moved here in the year 2018. Beautifully painted inside. This is just a fantastic facility. So this is the Hospada Tavern. Oh, this is great. Look at that. So cute. Well done. So next is the Czech Newspaper Museum. So this is actually a 1908 printing press. Next up is an 1895 sawmill. Next up is the Meagle House, constructed in the year 1890. With each building that I see, I'm more and more impressed with this museum. Definitely one of the great treasures of Texas. So just behind the Meagle House, you have this beautiful log barn built in 1904. Next up is the very charming 1890 Huchanik Salas House. This organ. Beautifully painted and decorated inside. A 
big family needs a big dinner table. One last building in the Czech village. Tomato planter. Oh, reminds me of a tobacco planter. So when you're driving down the back roads of Fayette County, Texas, pay attention. You just never know what you might stumble onto.